Hi everyone, my name is Anthony DeAngelis III and I am from Cranston, Rhode Island, born and raised. I uh, graduated class of 2020 uh, during the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, which was unreal. Um, and I chose URI Pharmacy because I fell in love with the program when I had visited as like a junior in high school. And I liked being close to home because I'm very close with my family, but it was far enough away where I felt like I could still go home, but it wasn't like too close to home. And that was really a deciding factor for me, especially because I knew I wanted to be a pharmacist kind of early on in high school. And my cousin was alumni of the URI pharmacy program as well. So I kind of had talked to her at the beginning too. So that was really a deciding factor for me. Cool, I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so my first question for you is just like, um, tell us a little bit about like what you do and um, what's like a typical day at work like for you? Um, so I am a community pharmacist at CVS Health. Um, a typical day um, can be quite busy, especially with everything that's been happening with the pandemic. I think everybody's just working harder than, harder than ever, but particularly in the setting of community pharmacy, retail pharmacy. Um, a typical day could be me um, looking at prescriptions, doing drug utilization reviews, and making sure that there aren't any dangerous interactions between medications that people are taking. A consulting patients at the consultation window to do over-the-counter recommendations and consultations, providing anywhere from COVID-19 vaccinations to influenza vaccinations to shingles vaccinations, like a lot of different disease states, and as well as doing other things um, that go into kind of running a pharmacy, a lot of like inventory and making sure our controlled substance um, counts uh, that are required by our law are done. So a lot of things like that as part of like the business part of it as well. Awesome. So it sounds like you do a bunch of different things. So what made you choose community over any other setting? Um, I really fell in love with like the community aspect of pharmacy um, because I've always found that I am good at talking to people. It was something that I found early on that I really enjoyed like helping other people and trying to get like my foot in the door. I did some volunteer work at a hospital during high school and I really chose pharmacy because I wanted to help people but I didn't want to become a doctor and do everything a doctor did. And because my cousin had already gone through the program and I had started to talk to her, I was like, I think this might be like a good fit for me because it still allowed me to use a bunch of different skills but not quite at that level, which I really didn't want. Um, but. I chose community ultimately just because of the interaction that I get to have with patients and really making a difference in the lives of the people that are right there in my community. So I find it very rewarding to be able to do that and work with them like one on one. And I always say community pharmacists are really the most accessible healthcare provider and are going to do so much in the future with the profession changing. So. I totally agree with everything you just said. Yeah, it's really like you get to interact with so many different people every day. And I feel like you really can see like the impact you're making on like all your patients' lives. Like it's really a great feeling, I bet. Yeah, it definitely is. Great. And then, so my next question was just, um, I know you said you're doing like so many different things at work. So how do you handle like any difficult situations that may come up like throughout your work day? I mean, just like anybody, obviously, there's going to be stressful days, bad days at work. But, you know, when I hit those moments, I try and tell myself to just like take a deep breath and I work through it. I slow down a bit and, I'm, and I try and think it out a little bit more. And especially, you know, if I mean, not every interaction, you know, is always like happy go lucky. You do deal with patients and obviously they're really sick coming from the ER to pick up an antibiotic or like you have people coming in who are family members of people who are on hospice who are picking up medications because their loved one is unfortunately slowly deteriorating and might be passing away. And that's the, I feel like really what I lo like lo love about community too is the relationships that, that you're building with your patients. It's like it hit, you really feel hit hard when one of your patients, you know, like something like that happens or um, you get so close to some of your patients that they may even give you things for their like to show that they appreciate you. I've had that happen 
at my store um, before. And I actually had a customer give me a card because I like really helped her out and she uh, mailed a card to like my pharmacy. So um, that like, it's really, it's really nice in that way. Um, but you know, you try and be as patient with people as possible and try and understand that everybody's situation, you can't be ju judging of other people and what they're going through, especially after everything that we've all been through in the COVID pandemic. Um, it's really changed a lot of people's lives and unfortunately people are still struggling, so. That was a really awesome answer. I love that answer especially too like now with COVID and like especially like you said like when people like are picking up prescriptions like you don't know like what they're going through or what like the patient's going through like you might just see like a prescription for something and you don't know like the backstory behind it so having the ability to like piece it all together and like meet the patient or meet like their family members like that's so great that you're able to like have those interactions with them and I bet that's so rewarding for you too very much and so my next question is just, um, what's like your favorite part about your job? You might've kind of already answered this, but. <laughs> um, yeah, I think my favorite part about my job, I really love giving immunizations. Um, I really find that I get to spend a lot of time like talking to patients. Um, when I'm giving an immunization, um, I kind of go through everything and like the side effects, but it's always like a part of pharmacy that I like fell in love with like the minute I was able to get in, immunized certified. And I did my CPR training like right after um, you get immunized certified really early in the curriculum through URI pharmacy, which is awesome because I have friends in other pharmacy schools in other states where they might not get that training until like the end of their pharmacy when they're curriculum when they're about to become pharmacists. So getting to do it early on and getting the practice in as an intern, it's a um, valuable experience, but I always found it really fun. I don't know, something I really enjoy. <laughs> yeah, no, I really enjoy that too. If you want to, I know you did the COVID vaccine clinics at the long-term care facilities. If you want to talk about that a little bit and expand on that, that'd be cool. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was uh, fortunate enough to be part of the CVS Health Long-Term Care COVID-19 Vaccination Initiative um, back when the first vaccine, which was Pfizer, rolled out about the end of December. Uh, Rhode Island went live on the 28th of December, 2020 with clinics. And um, I had started picking up clinics on my days off as needed, but I was asked to go in full-time on this initiative in January. And from January 2021 to March 2021, I was a, a clinic lead, which we call COVID depot leader. And I led clinics and nursing homes throughout the state and vaccinated hundreds of residents along with teams of pharmacists and nurses and technicians. So it was very, very rewarding to be a part of trying to save the world and really get it back to normal. And I really felt like my, um, job really felt meaningful during that time and people really really appreciated it because they finally were going to be able to see like their loved ones again and um just seeing everybody like really really happy to get it after such a year of hardship was so rewarding i totally agree i did some of those too um and I loved them so much. Like I love, that was like my favorite thing. Like I really enjoyed like going and like hearing people's like backstories, especially like in the nursing homes. Like a lot of them were like, now I finally am like one step closer to getting to see like my kids and my grandkids again. Like it was so awesome to hear that and like being able to be that person to like get them one step closer is such like an awesome feeling at the end of the day. Like you just feel like good going home. Like, you know, you made an impact on like, hundreds of people a day. Like it's literally just the best feeling ever. Yeah, hundred percent. Awesome. And then, so where do you see like the future of community pharmacy going? Like in what direction? I have been very, very passionate about how community pharmacists are really the most accessible healthcare provider. And when I was a student, I was very heavily involved in the American Pharmacists Association. And I'm trying to extend that now into my professional career. And I'm happy to announce I was also just recently elected as a council member for 2021 to 2023 of the Rhode Island Pharmacists Association. So I'm continuing that push um, because I'm so passionate about what community pharmacists can bring to the table. 
in years to come, primary care physicians will be dropping and pharmacists are going to be able to fill that gap. But we just need the government to recognize that because community pharmacists and pharmacists in general aren't recognized under Medicare Part B as an official health care provider. We have doctors, P PAs, nurses, midwives, audiologists, they're all recognized as providers and pharmacists are the most successful healthcare provider. More than 90% of Americans live within five miles of a pharmacy. And I have, was passionate about that during school. I actually went to Capitol Hill and spoke to our state legislators here in Rhode Island and the, their legislative assistants advocating for that provider status. So that's what it's called. If we were to get that recognition, it's called provider status. And there's another big national push for that. It kind of ha has to happen where it gets a push. Unfortunately, if a bill doesn't make it, you have to start again. So there's been a couple of those where the cycle repeats with provider status, and it's been a fight for a long time. So it'd be really awesome after everything that pharmacists have done this pandemic to really get that recognition and see, like have other people see how much we have brought to the table, especially with our COVID-19 testing and vaccination efforts. And it would be really, really exciting to see because I think community pharmacists have, are very underutilized in some ways with the knowledge that they are able to bring to the table. No, I totally agree. And that's everything you said, I totally agree with. Like, I think we have so much to offer and it would be so great to see us being able to play like a bigger role. Like, I know I read so many articles about pharmacists during the pandemic, like really being like the true heroes, like on the front lines, like getting the vaccines to so many people, just being accessible um, with CVS and all the different other chains like Walgreens and everybody going into the nursing homes and administering the vaccine like we really did so much and it would be great to get like provider status and have recognition for that so I really hope that that does go in the future so that would be awesome to see and yeah I would really really I think it would allow us to practice at the top of our license which is something that you know I think before going into the URI pharmacy program I didn't realize all that pharmacists could do and even just something you know, like you knew that pharmacists worked in a community setting, but what they're able to offer now with the training that we have now, and especially with URI's training, like we could go so much farther. And I really like hope that that comes to fruition. I totally agree with that too. <laughs> like we do so much and like we're in so many different settings and being in community, like we're so accessible to so many people. And I feel like not everybody always realizes that too. Like utilize your community pharmacist. Like we have so much knowledge to offer. Like we can really provide you with so many great, like, you know, even just like self-care recommendations too. Like, you know, like we have so much to offer. So totally agree with that. Um, so then you kind of talked about this too. So how did you or I prepare you for your role as a community pharmacist? Um, I think that you or I pharmacy and the faculty are amazing and they, no matter, you know, if you're doing community or not, just in general, they really prepare you so, so well. And I love that you or I has such a clinical aspect within the curriculum because I think going forward, community pharmacists are going to be doing a lot more. So just to like, you know, having that like such heavily pushed, especially with our simulation labs and doing like one-on-one -on -one patient cases with actors at, um, that come from the nearby Wakefield Theater is absolutely amazing to try and, and enact like real life scenarios that like we could have, whether it be the hospital or the community setting and really getting that like one-on-one -on -one experience like in the in the labs and kind of those clinical pearls like in our lectures that um, are just good to know in general within different practice settings that, you know, it might not be on our NAPLEX or anything, but just really important information, you know, going forward and with special cases and special patients, so. Yeah, I totally agree. Like even with um, like the patient counseling um, situations that we get every semester, like it's really great because I really do like use that in my daily life, like at work. Like I'm, I feel like I'm counseling people every day on things from like inhalers to just like blood pressure medications, like so many different things. And like, there's so many different like counseling points that are so important that you or I definitely does a great job teaching us about. 
So absolutely I agree. And then my last question is just, um, what advice would you have for any incoming or and current students? So advice for incoming students. So I, the one big thing that I would say is get involved. I remember at the beginning, like being, you know, like, you know, we start stepping into college is like a new chapter, but get involved as soon as you can. You will have no regrets. I was involved in numerous organizations throughout my time at URI, starting with the American Pharmacists Association. Actually, when I started college, I really was already into pharmacy and wanted to start dipping my feet in, even though I didn't have the training from the professional years yet. Um, but there's so many ways to get involved, even without um, you being like a P1 in the first professional year or above. And I was a member since my freshman year of college of the American Pharmacists Association, um, really making sure to remember to enjoy yourself. Pharmacy school is really, really hard and it's all about balance. And, you know, there's times where you really need to grind hard and study hard, but also knowing when too much is like, you know, you need to remember self-care for yourself, 100% and like taking care of your mental health is really, really important. Trying to take care of your physical health as well. And also, um, I was also lucky enough to be a part of Kappa Psi Pharmaceutical Fraternity, which I'm still a part of as a graduate. It's the oldest pharmacy fraternity in the world. Um, we actually have chapters in the U.S. and uh, Canada and the Bahamas. So um, being a part of that was really beneficial to my college experience. And just getting involved in these organizations is so good for networking because you never know what other opportunities are going to come your way, especially with pharmacists doing more and more and more these days. That is something that no matter what, it's so important. And if I can also say anything else, if you don't, um, community pharmacy, anybody should get a job in community pharmacy as a student, because no matter where you're going, the experience that you'll learn from that and talking to people is just like, you'll never regret it, I promise. I totally agree. Like I work at CVS also, in case you couldn't tell by now, because I talked about the COVID clinics and everything. Um, but yeah, I really like just like those communication skills that I feel like I learned at work, like, or regardless of where I go in the future, like are applicable to like everything, like, and just like life in general, like communicating with people, like you learn so much um, working in like a community setting, like, even more than you think. And like, I totally agree too with like the work life balance. Like I know like when I was like a P1, like I had such a tough time, like trying to like realize like, okay, like I need to spend time studying, but not too much. I need to spend my time, you know, like doing like other stuff, but also not too much on that. So definitely finding that like balance and like self-care, like you said too, like, and URI always has things too that um, where they promote like, you know, looking for like self-care opportunities. So that way you don't just like feel overwhelmed all the time because it is hard and it is stressful, but I feel like URI has so many different things like the wellness Wednesdays that we were doing that Dr. LeMay was running. Like they do so many things like to like help support us and provide us with extra resources for so many different things. So totally agree on that too. Yeah, and I do, I feel like you or I faculty, they're, they're, they are there for you and they are there as your professors. Like, I feel so comfortable going to so many of them. And even like, you know, if you're having a tough time, like they will take the time, like if you set up time with them to explain a certain concept to you, or like even just if you need like some help, like you have an advisor um, with you that's assigned to you for your four years. And like so many of the faculty are definitely so supportive and it's just a great environment, I think, especially when, you know, you're there for six years and it's like, you're gonna have days where it's gonna get hard, but just knowing that you have the support around you is like so important.